What's going on guys, welcome back. Today we're going to finish the track Bone with Metasploit by completing the last machine on this track. That is Real. Now Real is categorized as a hard machine. As you can see, here are the different skills and techniques we will have to demonstrate while doing this machine. Now most notably this machine will walk you through Active Directory penetration testing. Okay. So as you can see here, by doing this machine, we will have finished the track and you can actually... Now, we have devil here. Now, the missing thing about devil is the user flag, which I haven't uh, submitted yet. But you can find all of the machines in the playlist, which I will put in the video description. It includes all of the walkthroughs all of these for all of these machines. Okay, so the first thing we do is, we spawn, is spawning the machine. And here, let's see if the NMAP scan is finished. All right, let's scroll up, and here we are presented with the nmap scan results. As you can see, we have 21 open, 22, and 25. 25 is the port designated for the SMTP servers, or the SMTP protocol responsible for sending and receiving emails along with IMAP and POP3. And we have other protocols as well that indicates we are actually um, scanning a Windows machine. Most probably it is a Windows Server machine. We are not sure yet of the nature of the operating system. As you can see, we have, we have the host script results and it indicates that it is Windows Server 2012 R2. Now, is this Windows Server part of Active Directory or not? That's what we will have to find out. Let's go back to Nmap Scan and see where we have to get started. As you can see, port 21 is a good starting point as the FTP service um, shows that we can log in using anonymous credentials. So FTP username as anonymous, password as anonymous, and we are logged in. DIR CD documents, DIR, and we have all of these files. Okay, so for the analysis, we're going to grab these files by typing mget asterisks. So using that, we will download the files to the current working directory. So because I have done this before, I'm going to exit cd to real. And I have the files here. Application locker readme and windows event forwarding now the bottom line is here so you're not going to open the document okay in a typical scenario you're going to go over every single one of these files but if you have been watching my videos you will have been you will you must be familiar now that i like to save time so i'm gonna jump directly to the uh, essence of this challenge so here even if you open the file, you're not going to see anything. You have to use Exif tool. Using Exif tool, we display the metadata of the file. Now, Microsoft Office documents contain metadata about the author. Right. Now, if you are able to extract the metadata of the Microsoft Office documents that we encounter on the targets, we might have we might have actually we might see information about users, emails, that could prove useful later down the road. So if you use the Exif tool here to extract the metadata, you will see here we have an email address. Nico at megabank.com. So given that we have now an email address, and given the fact, previously we have discovered that there is an SMTB server open on the machine which means this email address could be valid right now what we have to do here we have to enumerate for possible valid email addresses on the server to be able to do that we will have to use smtb enumeration tools let's go to enumeration notes here which you can grab by subscribing to channel membership smtb and here we're going to use the SMTP user enumeration, which you can download from the dentist monkey using this URL. All right, so the command here, let's copy the command. 
Of course, first we will need a user list. Now let's go back and create a user list. Now the user list consists of possible email addresses that we suspect are valid on the machine. Now where to grab the list? So basically we have no clue here where to grab the list as of now. But what you can do here, we can use Telnet to interact first with the SMTP server. Now by interacting with SMTP server, we can have an idea about what kind of email addresses that are valid on the SMTP server. So I'll have to specify the protocol here, 25. And now it's saying mail service is ready. Let's say hello, Nico at megabank. Was it .com or .http? It is .com. So bad sequence of commands. Wow. Okay. Let's try mail from Nico at megabank .com. Again, we have bad sequence. So mail from, let's say hello, megabank.com. All we receive is bad sequence of commands. All right, never mind. Let's go back, quit. Okay, let's now create a word list. Okay, so nano mail list inside the list we're going to put possible email addresses so the first one is nico at megabank.com this one is valid we have just discovered let's try admin at megabank.com administrator at megabank.com root at megabank.com we can also try something like a real at megabank.com okay now we have this domain right what if we try nico at real.http and we put the same for admin at real administrator root at real.http and lastly, real at real. That's good for now. Let's now put the command here, paste it, and enumerate or find out what are the correct email addresses among the ones we have just created in the list. So the target IP is 10, 10, 77. The user list is mail I don't know what's the problem with this so why it's not taking tab to control okay tab dash m receipt we're going to test these email addresses for the receipt command and let's try so what we have got is nico at real http exists admin real http exists typically most of them exist on the machine now, where do we go with this? So basically, let's go back now to the nmap scan. So from the FTP server, we have grabbed some files that one of them indicated or, sh or actually proved that there is one valid email address. Now, from the valid email address, we enumerated or we created a word list of possible email addresses, valid email addresses, which we made sure some of them were correct by enumerating the SMTP server or by doing enumeration on the SMTP protocol here. Okay, now here we have the SSH server as well, which we can try the list of emails against using brute force, but that's out of the question for now. And we have as well here the NetBIOS. Other than that, nothing to do. Okay, so the nature of this challenge is kinda unique. So what we are going to do here, since we have discovered the valid email addresses, we can start a phishing attack on one of these users, right? So the essence of this challenge 
is to use um, an exploit that dates back to 2017. It is CVE 2017 So if I show you the exploit here. Okay, Microsoft Office 2007, Service Pack 3, and Microsoft Office 2010, 2013, 16 as well, and all of these operating systems, Vista, Server 2008, Server 2000, uh, 2008, Windows 7, Windows 8. Now, if you have all of these versions or one of these versions for Microsoft Office or as a Windows operating system, if we create an RTF document, okay, using some kind of payload, or let me call it in other words, if you create a Microsoft Office malicious payload using Metasploit, we're going to be able, if the we're going to be able to send that payload through an email address to the victim. So if you go back here, we have a list of valid email addresses. If we send this payload or Microsoft Office malicious payload to one of these email addresses and the recipient happens or if the recipient opens the attachment, we will have a shell back to the machine. That's the essence of this challenge. Now, if we launch here, MSF console, if, oh, let's leave this window here and go back, open your window and launch MSF console. There's a dedicated module on Metasploit that can be used to create an HTA malicious payload. Now, if I go to back to the factory here and search for Office. Okay. So with Metasploit, we can create um, Microsoft Office Backdoor. So using this module. So with this module, we will create an HTA document along with um, a Microsoft Office document. Let me explain the mechanisms of this. Let's first copy the module. What's, I mean, why do we need two kind of documents? So use show options. Okay, scrolling up here, as you can see, we have two sets of options we have to fill out. But the first thing is the server host and the server ports. As you can see, we have a document that ends with HTA and another document that ends with doc. So what's going on here? So basically what, what happens, we will deliver the file name, right? We will change this to some sort of invoice, okay? We will deliver this to the other end of the recipient. Once the recipient opens this document, it's going to execute the HTML application. We call it the HTML application. Now this exact HTML application will open the shell back to my machine. So the Microsoft Office document here that I will create, okay, includes the payload or includes a call to the payload here, the HTML payload, which will be delivered or opened um, on the target machine. And once opened, it will deliver the shell on this port. So this port here will be used to host the HTML application, right? And this port here will be used to um, listen on the incoming connections. So the first step, we send this by email to the target. It's a Microsoft Office document that includes a call to this payload. This payload is hosted on my server on this port and will be delivered to the target machine. Once it's delivered and executed, it will, it will call or it will actually send the shell on this port. So let's fill out the necessary details. So first, set file name invoice doc okay set server board now we will have to as usual if config and the following options fail to validate ah server host sorry set server host ends with four and set server port the server port is the port can be eight or 80 80 sorry 
or 8080. Let's put it 8080. And then we're going to set the host is the same. My machine IP address. Set the port 445. And then we're going to say run. Okay. So now the payload has been created in this path. So I'm going to send this to whom? To one of these emails. All of them exist on the machine. I'm going to send this to one of these emails. Once the payload or the document is opened, it will call the HTML application payload on my server, which is already served, as you can see here, on this IP address. It's going to be delivered to the target machine and executed. And once it is executed, I will do. I will sorry, I will have the shell here on port four five four five. So now let's go ahead and send the email. So we're going to use Kali built-in sent email. It's already here. Okay. So dash f, we define the sender. It's my name. Dash t is the recipient. We know that Nico is part or is actually valid email address. Dash U, it is the subject, invoice attached. Dash M, it's the body, you are over you are uh, over to payment. And dash A here includes the attachment. Now let's go back and make sure the attachment path is correct. It is on a different path, so let's modify the path. Dash S is the um, server that is hosting the SMTB. Uh, it is the IP address that's hosting the SMTB server, and we enter. The attachment doesn't exist. Let's see here. Okay, let's remove that. So now it is delivered. As you can see, it is received. Let's wait a minute now till the document, as you can see, email was sent successfully. So now the target should have opened the document and therefore the document will, will actually call the HTML application here, which will execute the payload and deliver the shell to my machine. As you can see, sending stage, it started to execute and now I have one session using Meterpreter. Sessions. I have one session and now I am interacting with the session. So that's how we got the first shell on this machine. Okay, so PWD, where, I, where we are, we are under Windows System 32. Okay, so let's now navigate to CD C users shell let's drop shell cdc users and we have these users so who am i we are nico so we go to nico and this is the user flag and there is a file cred.xml type cred.xml let's see here let's take a look at the xml file so it contains stored credential system management automation ps credential which is a method to store plain text credentials in a secure format as you can see here the username is tom and this is the password okay so how to how to make use of that now, since the password has been created and stored using PS credentials, it means that this password is the secure form of a plain text format. Now, how to extract a plain text format? We're gonna have to rely on PowerShell again. So we use PowerShell dash C and let's see here. So cred, the file name is cred. Now let's 
open a new variable called grid and use the function import CLI XML. This function will import the already secure form of the password stored in the file, okay, and put it here in the credential variable, which I will decode later. So then define the path of the file grid XML. Next, I'm going to decode it using get network credential. Here, let's say format list. And as you can see, this is the plain text password. Now, this plain text password can be used in various forms. It can be used as PowerShell run as, or it can be used as net use. But fortunately for us, this password can be also be used on the SSH server. So if we use SSH Tom ten 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 seventy seven and there you go now we are logged in as Tom CD desktop we have Active Directory audits the Active Directory audit and we have these files node and bloodhound type node findings surprisingly no Active Directory attack paths from user to add to domain admin using default shortest path query maybe we should rerun cipher query against other groups we have created so this is a kind of hint that we will need to use Bloodhound to find the relationships between users and groups on this Active Directory machine. Now, there is one catch on this machine. The catch is the, let me show you. So Bloodhound Okay, we have ingesters and we have Power V already loaded on the machine. If we go to ingesters there is a CSV file. Now, normally in Bloodhound, to actually feed Bloodhound with the information it needs, you either have to upload a CSV file, as shown here, or you have to upload Sharphound PowerShell script on the target machine, invoke the collection methods for everything, and then upload it back to Bloodhound. Unfortunately, this, since this machine is old, none of these method methods will work and the reason is bloodhound has issued an update that no longer accepts csv file as an upload option so now if you try to actually upload this at this time today right if you try to upload it on a recently updated version of bloodhound it's not gonna work it's not gonna accept this form of file and if you try to upload Sharphound here, it's not going to work either. So what to do? I have actually downloaded the file on my machine and using CSV, I have actually extracted the relationships between the um, users themselves and the users and the groups. So if I go to the local machine, I have the SCLS CSV here. If you open this file, yeah, let's take it to my local machine, paste it here, and open it. Okay, take a look at this. Let's sort this out. So we have the object name, this includes the computer names, and the object type, whether it is user or group, 
the principal name, the principal type, group or user. And that's what's important, Active Directory writes. So, as you can see, we have write DACL, write owner. These are interesting, interest, interesting actually permissions or rights. Okay, so now since we have the shell, the first shell here, let's go back, using Tom, let's take a look at Tom now. So here you're gonna use the filter, and also you can use the filter as well. So here we're going to select Tom. Okay. So the principal name or the or Tom user has right owner Active Directory rights over Claire. So what does that mean? It means that Tom has the ability to change, modify on all of the objects owned by Claire, including its password. So how to take advantage of that? First, we're going to need to use Power View. So our objective here is to let Tom change the user or change the password of Claire and then we log in as Claire. Let's go back and then open Active Directory here. I'm going to search for right owner. Yeah, here we have. So first we're gonna load part of you. We have already part of you on the machine on this path. So let's load part of you. I'm going to copy everything from here. Okay, next thing is I'm going to change these. So set domain object owner, clear owner identity will be instead of Bob, it will be Tom. domain object owner is not it's like we we'll have to execute PowerShell because we are not on PowerShell dash EP bypass okay and then we're going to reset the password Okay, so here instead of Bob, oh, okay, it's messed up. Let's copy first this one. Okay, and then put Tom. Well, I have to change the command, many things. So instead of Alice, it will be Claire, I, I believe. And then we're gonna copy the principal identity. Which is going to be Tom. And the rights will be reset password. Okay, next we're going to reset the password and store it in a variable called credentials. Of course, we're going to need to, to convert this to a secure string. And then we're going to use this password. We're going to leave the last option to the last, very last. Because I don't want any space to corrupt the command. Force. And now I have changed the password. Or store the desired password in the variable credentials. Now we're going to set the identity here. It will be clear dash account 
password crud. Now, this way we have changed the password of the user Claire. Now, let's make sure we did this correctly by trying to log in as Claire. Remember that the plain text password is this one. And indeed now we are logged in as Claire. So what to do now? We have now to escalate from Claire to admin. Okay, let's go back here. And here we're going to filter again. Use Claire. As you can see, Claire has write DACL over the backup admins group. So what does that mean? It means Claire can make herself as part of backup admins. Now, we are using the Excel sheet, guys, because again, I'm going to repeat the reason because the newer versions of Bloodhound doesn't allow or don't allow the import of CSV files. So we're doing this manually ourselves. So Claire now can add herself to the backup admins. Let's take a look at the backup admins group. So no one is part of backup admins. Okay, net group backup admins clear. Okay, so now we have been or we have added clear successfully to the group. Let's make sure that uh, clear has been added. So we issue net group backup admins. Let's take a look at the group. And mm, okay, I think we have to log in, log out, and back in to the user Claire. So exit. Let's go back here and copy the password. Okay, net. Group back up admins. Clear. Now, clear is part of the backup admins group. So, what does that mean? It means now clear is supposed to have administrators, administrator rights. Supposedly. Let's take a look at the administrator group. The permissions of the administrator group. System cannot find the file specified. Zero files. CD back. And again. Okay. So here we are checking the permissions on the administrator directory. As you can see, the backup admins have. This group has full control over the directory. What does that mean? It means we can cd to... What's going on? It's really messed up. This is really weird. Weird as hell. <laughs> and here, as you can see, we can cd to desktop. We have the root flag, which we cannot type or display it's really funny access denied but we have backup scripts cd to backup scripts and we have these files backup backup script ps1 zip file and folders system state if you take a look at this one Let's see. This is the backup script content. Start from here. Admin password. <laughs> wow. So the plain text admin password is blatantly written here. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this password as you can see here 
to SSH to another user. This time will be the admin user. CD desktop. And now you can display the contents of the root flag. So that was it guys. Active directory penetration testing. Easy. It's not that difficult. And I hope you guys find something useful and I'm going to see you in the next video.